Hi everyone, I'm Robbie Herring and I'm here for Flying Unicorn tonight and we are going to make a canvas. I'm sure you've probably seen it on Facebook and if not you can go and get the full supply list there if you want to take a peek at that. And we're going to start out with some announcements. Um, first up, don't forget that uh, everything I use in my class is 10% off in the store. Um, so be sure to check by there if you want something that you see. And then pre-orders for the kits which are seriously truly one of my very favorite kits ever they're open for another 24 hours and next up we're going to have Jennifer Schneider and she'll be next Wednesday at the same time in the same place so all right let's see if we can go ahead and get started y'all bear with me I'm gonna move my camera down make sure y'all can see and we're all set okay it's a flat project, which is something I haven't been doing a lot of. Let's see. Camera doesn't want to stay. Give me one sec, you guys. I think these little holders kind of wear out over time is what I've about decided. Okay. I'll make my I'll move my project to be straight instead of the camera. <laughs> All right, so here's what we're gonna make. And it's a canvas, and it's just a really simple little thing. And it is 6 by 12. And you can see that there's a little bit of detail on the side. Lots of beautiful flowers. Masking. We're going to use some pins tonight. So kind of a little bit of everything tonight, just to play. And this one just kind of was one of those things that I just kind of was going with the flow. There was a new product I noticed in the store. I don't know if it's totally new, but it was new to me. And I wanted to give it a try. So I decided that that was what we were doing tonight. And so it actually ended up being kind of an experiment for me, but it's also definitely inspired, lots of ideas that are inspired by people I admire and that I've watched and, you know, over time. So here we go. Here's what we're doing. And we're going to get started. And the first thing I want to tell you all is, is here's the 6 by 12 canvas. You can get them. I think Alda has them in the store, actually. And I went ahead and worked ahead a little because there's kind of a lot of ground to uh, cover. Let's see. I'm trying to get the light right because I can see I've got a glare. Um, there's a lot of ground to cover. So the first thing you're going to do is you're going to just put a quick coat of gesso on it. And I've already done that. So here's our white canvas to start. And then these are the products that... All the has in the store that I wanted to try, and they're called they're by Lindy Stamp Game Gang, and they're called Magicals. And what they are is when you open them up, I don't really even really know what they are, but they're like a pigment powder, and these are really cool because you can mix them with pretty much everything. And for tonight's class, we're gonna just mix them simply with water, which I found pretty amazing. And y'all, I think y'all are gonna like this too. So. All that gave us these in the kit. So if you got the kit, you have one of these handy. And we're we're just going to use a little, whoops, a lot less than that, but a little bit of water in uh, for each color. And we're going to use three colors tonight. And I'm going to soak some of this up. I should have got something smaller or had it pre-poured. Do all the work ahead and then you don't think about the water causing a problem. Give me one sec to get rid of some of this. Got rid of more than I needed. All right. Had to find. Let's get a tiny bit more. Overdid it. Maybe one of those nights. So y'all hold tight. Yep. See, too much in that one again. <laughs> okay. And then what you're going to do is, is you're going to take a tiny bit of this powder. And you'll see why I don't want a whole bunch of water because I want these to last. And they do because it takes so much. And so what I just did was I'm just going to use the tip of this trowel. And you're just going to put a little bit in there and I'm going to bring and then you're going to give it a little stir. Now I went and looked to see what all you can do with this and you can use this with gessos and any kind of medium. But look how bright and the brilliance of the color that that stays, which I thought was really amazing for such a tiny bit of product. And then what I did, we're going to do all three colors. And the reason being is, the one thing I did find is if I let them sit just a second, they, uh, let's see which one I used. Okay. Uh, if you let them sit just a second, 
they, it, it gives them a little bit more time to get all of the color distributed. I noticed with the orange color that we're going to use tonight that it's it must be a mix of kind of an orangey watermelony color and some red because if I didn't let it sit I got a few little streaks. So I just wanted to give it just a couple of minutes to sit. So that's why we're getting started here first. And I don't know if you can see it's kind of off camera but I'm wiping off the color so I don't mix up my colors once I get this done. Oh and I haven't told you all the colors. Hang on just a second and I'll tell you. Remember, they're all on the supply list if you need it. So this is, uh, there's five in the package, which is really neat, but I use the Bonjour Butter, the Chateau Rose, and the Cesse La Vie Cerise. Not sure how to say that. And there's also like a mint color, and then there's the Cafe A Lot that is, uh, it looks kind of orange in the deal, but I mixed it, and it is brown, a real pretty brown. So that's what we did. And while that, oh, here's the colors. And actually, you can kind of see in this red one why I want to let it sit just a little bit is because that'll help it break down a little bit. So while that does that, because we're going to be trying to work and dry all at the same time tonight, we're going to go ahead and cut our heart because I want that, I want to be working on that while I've got the colors mixed and we're ready to go. And all I did for the heart was, was a pencil, and since my canvas is six inches, I wanted my heart to be basically about six inches wide. Now, you'll notice, or you'll remember on the canvas, I'll show you real quick. I did it about that six inches, but I, I overlapped it because I didn't want it to go all the way. And in fact, this one's a hair more, but this gives you an idea of how we're going about it. And what I did was I just folded it in half the paper lightly. See, it's not a big fold, and it's not going to matter if you've got a bit of a fold in it. And then I folded it in half again, because at the end, I want about six inches, and that gave me, and also, I, I chose not to do the design on this. I think they'll be great to fussy cut later, but for this, I just decided that, uh, I wanted it to not have the design because I wanted it to take advantage of all the other stuff we were doing and we're covering it. And then, so now I have my six inches because I'm going to do half. So, and then I want it about, not 12 inches, but I want it to be, you know, pretty large here. So I basically just put myself a mark and put it down here because it's about how long I wanted it. And if y'all can't, let me get up, let me pull this up a little bit higher. I can see y'all can't see everything real well. I'm a little close in. Okay. So all you're going to do, and I'm going to give this a little bit better of a fold so I can see it. And there, now you can see it. I can see on the camera. Okay. And you're just going to loosely draw you a heart. I'm going a little past. And cut it out. But by doing the simple little folds, you have a starting place so that your heart, the first time, is about the size. And you'll see, I'll probably go back and tweak my heart once I open it a little bit. But this gives you a good jumping off spot. And however you like your heart shape. Some people I know like them a little fancier at the bottom or to dip a little deeper. I vary. So here, here you can see my heart, and I am going to trim it just a touch. Somebody text me if y'all are having trouble seeing. It's kind of hard to not to watch and see when I'm working. Okay, and I'm going to trim up the edges just a tiny bit because I've got a couple of places. And then we're going to erase... The camera is moving as I go. I can I can see it happening, but I can't get it to stop. Okay. So you can see here, and I'm going to erase just my couple of little pencil lines that are left. And then just because I like smooth edges, I'm going to give it just a tiny bit of distressing, which will take out any little scissor marks that are left on there. 
And I'm trying not to work on white. We'll get color going here in a bit and get rid of all the white. Okay. So that's it. Here we go. That's our heart. That simple. All right. Now for the color. This is the fun part. And what we're going to do, I'm going to mix this up one last time to make sure the colors, the pigments all mixed in. And I'm going to kind of work from lightest to darkest. And i uh, probably going to have a mess tonight. And I have baby wipes here to help me out when I do because there's nothing neat. You'll notice my nails aren't done tonight. And that would be because there was absolutely no point in it because I I'm feel sure I'll dip my hands. This is just a regular nylon, I think, paintbrush. And what I did was I just loosely in just different places, not anything major, not anything hard. Uh, got a little bit of lint there. Uh, just randomly place some paint around. And I started with the lattice because when we start, and I'm doing a little bit on the sides too, you'll notice, just because when I display them, I don't like them if they don't have a little something extra. Uh, I don't like the white showing or like a drippy mess. I'd rather it carry across. Okay. So, and you can see I've got a little bit of the pigment in there, but it's not gonna, of the blue, but that's not going to matter. And then I am going to rinse between these. And you can even go back, I found with these, if, if you don't feel like it's kind of giving you the look you want, you can go back and just use a little bit of water, I mean a tiny bit on your thing, and you can see it just drags it. And it sits great on the gesso. I did try it on a canvas without gesso. And it, the color is not quite as brilliant if you're not on the gesso background. All right, we're going to do a little blue, move to the next color. And you can get this, the more, the more, the less water or the more pigment, you know, per part that you use, you're going to get more vibrant color. For this, I wanted it vibrant, but I didn't really want it over the top. So you can see we're just going in different places where there's openings. A little bit on the sides here. I'm going to blend it a little bit. Let's see if, I don't know if y'all can see that. And all the different sides. Sorry, it's hard to let y'all see all, all the sides. I'm trying to make sure I do. See, I'm working flat and it should be easy and I'm still not doing it easily. <laughs> but nothing, nothing will top trying to show y'all all the gift bag stuff. That was my that was my one that I thought, what was I thinking? You can see here, I'm just giving a little bit of color. And I've got a little bit of drip going here. I knew my hands would end up in it. I just didn't think it would be quite so early. So you can see where we're going here. And see the color, how this just kind of blends in, almost like a, a watery color look, which I guess technically it is because we're using it, but using so much water. Um, if you if you go and look, you can find that people have done the, the mediums, just everything with it. This I got pretty heavy with the yellow, but this is, this color is almost, I'd call it watermelon. It's not red, it's not peach, it's not really an orange, and I'm just going to give it some color here. And remember, a lot of this is going to be covered up because the heart. So basically, we're just building some color to set our project on. And missed a spot here. I don't want really, I don't mind a little white showing. But now that it's kind of got all the colors, you'll see, I hope y'all can see this, it, uh, it kind of starts to almost bleed together, and I love this look of it. And in fact, 
Let's see if we can get the light over here a little bit. Oh, that may be too much glare. Is that better? I'll watch the thing to see if you'll tell me if that's better or if I need to move it back out again. All right, a little bit on the side. And see, if you layer it, because like here, I don't think it's quite dark enough. I want some more. You can just keep layering this. Okay, now let me get a little bit here. And look, this is kind of neat. It did drip, but I like the way it looks. And a little over here. I see you wrote about making you think about spring. I think I'm ready. I think that's why I was really in the mood to do some really pretty colors. Okay, so that is the background of the canvas, and it's that simple. If your gesso is a little damp, mine happens to be totally dry, but that doesn't matter. If it's a little damp, it still works great. You'll love it. Okay, now for the heart, all I did with it was I wanted it. Oh, and I forgot to tell you all what this is. This is a Vintage Venture. Um, this is by Ritter. And I know I'm not going to say this right. I'm going to butcher it. It's Rittershawn. And uh, this is Cart. And this actually was in the January kit. And it's so pretty. And the color, the, the color family is, I mean, it's almost the same, but it's just not quite as vibrant. So what I did with this, and you'll see why I said the fold doesn't matter. Um, I, I just gave it a quick wash with what was left over of the paint, of the, the watercolor mixture I've made. And that got a little too red. There we go. So... Nothing, nothing real major. Just enough to give it some color. So that's it. And I, I will also tell you, I'm going to, uh, this will, once we attach this, it's going to get rid of most of the buckling because using the water is going to buckle it a little bit, but don't worry about it. It doesn't matter because we're going to attach it. And I really try not to dry, but tonight we're going to have to. So give me a second and I'll read the chat. I love it too, Delana. These papers are so pretty and I love all the Rittershelm papers. Every one of them we've gotten or that I've played with has just been terrific. And I never can decide if I want uh, or if I like this, what do you call it? These heat guns or the hair dryer? <laughs> But I think the heat gun gets hotter, so I thought I'll try that tonight just for, just for the sake of time. <laughs> it's not a talent when you're just running the, uh, what do you call this, the heat gun. Except that I really can't because you notice I stumble over my words when I try to read and see what y'all are saying. I'm going to dry this up a bit. Okay. And then the next thing I did... I think that's dry enough, is I wanted this heart to have some shading. So what I did was I used this, <laughs> and this is a funny story I'll share with y'all. This is uh, the Sultry Shimmer. It's Color Bloom from Prima, and it's Peony. But I had a discussion with one of my Southern friends today, <laughs> and we call it Peony. <laughs> so I don't know if it's a Southern thing or if it really... Well, actually, she looked it up, and it actually is peony, evidently, but I really have to say that I truly thought it was uh, peony. I thought I thought everybody else was saying it wrong. Now, why I would think I was right, I will never know. Okay, this is, all I did, I moved it out of the way. All I did with this is I wanted to just give it a little bit of shading instead of it just being the flat color, and so I just dipped a paintbrush in it and started giving myself some color here. And just in various places, almost a, a shadow look. And this is another thing, too. If you get like a rough edge, and you can see I'm just kind of moving it around. But if you get like a hard edge that you don't like, add a little bit of water. And, and this will spread, too, until you've dried it. On the paper, it'll definitely stay once you've gotten it all dry. And I'm doing a little at a time just because I want it to be somewhat subtle.
and I'm going to do just a tiny bit on this side. I got to working and forgot to pay attention if I was in or not, and my mouse had, I had to move my mouse so I could see y'all again. All right, so that is it for the shading for now. And I'm going to add a little bit of water and pull this color and blend it just a touch more. I think y'all can see, I probably ought to move it in the camera a little bit. But what I have here is just a water cup. And I, I'm i generally kind of dipping into it, getting my color where I want it. But I'm going to move this up close once I get my lid on because I'll spill it. So y'all can see that it's not any, it's not a major difference, but it just isn't quite so flat. And I like that with this water in here, you can still see these pretty little polka dots behind it. So you still get the pretty pattern on that paper. And of course, now I'm going to get picky. Okay, well, let me dry this one a bit. See, my hands are, my fingers are already yellow. They were yellow on the first one. I think that the yellow, the pigment must be the strongest because it's the one I had the most trouble getting off. Okay, this will finish drying while we do the rest. All right, next up is some modeling paste. And I looked for this, and you can see I try to keep my stencils clean sometimes, but I use something gold on here, and it's not coming off, so we all have to bear with me. But this is Prima. I think it's called Static. And I could not remember for the life of me, but I'm almost positive that it's static. And I'm just going to use some modeling paste. And we're just going to add a little bit of texture to the whoops to the background. If I don't knock the water over. That would be a fun night, huh? And I know y'all have seen us all do this because we all love this stuff, but we're just going to add a little bit, not anything real heavy. And remember, we want to get up high enough because that heart is pretty big. So we want to make sure that we get up high enough that you can see it. And so here, let me show you all this. This is the neatest stencil because it's kind of subtle, but really neat too. And lately I've been buying my texture paste industrial strength in case or industrial size. <laughs> Every time I pull this out, I kind of laugh because I was buying the small ones and I kept going through it so fast that every now and then I thought there's certain things I think you need just a big one. So that's what I did. And this is going to be the same thing, just, just in a few little spots. And you can see I'm not being particular here. I got it a little heavy on the side, and that's fine with me. And then the one thing I did do, though, is I did go in and add, for the same reasons I added the color, I added just a, a tiny bit here and, whoops, here and there on the sides, too. It's going to be a little hard for you all to see. But all I'm doing is just doing a little bit on the sides. So if you can't see it, because I can't move it too much or else I'm going to mess it up on the front. And the front's the part I like the best, so I'm going to try not to do that. Okay, now we're going to dry this up a little bit. And we're going to revisit this, this particular stencil here in a little while. So I'm actually going to take one minute to wipe it off. Or else we really will have a mess tonight. So I'm curious how the weather is. And all where I know everybody is so spread out. Um, you can see I'm wearing a sweater tonight. But yesterday it was 77 here. And... Today it's chilly again, but I'd say probably 50, mid 50s. But for us, that's that's still a little bit more chilly. Okay. All right. Now, the other thing I wanted to do, I'm gonna mess this up. All right. Is um, 
I wanted to add texture to the to the heart as well. And I'm going to put this on a paper towel because I didn't grab a sheet of paper for it tonight. And this one, because the title is Listen to Your Heart, to me, I wanted it to say something, um, you know, I wanted it to say something within the heart. And I, I tossed around the idea of writing on it or, you know, doing the, the strips of paper like I did on the canvas on it. And then I remembered, I love this scripty thing. And this is, I wrote it down so I remember, it's Crafter's Workshop and it's called Art Is. So what I used, what I did is I did the same texture like I, always, like I normally would and just like we did on the canvas. But this one I thought was so perfect for an art project and because I was just kind of going with the flow. And it says artist, I'm not going to read the whole thing, but it basically it starts out, art is just another way of expressing our innermost thoughts onto concrete media. So, and it goes on to talk about all that. And I thought, isn't that perfect to listen to our heart and have something that actually is close to it um, that it actually says. So, again, this is just the modeling paste. And you can see I love this thing because, whoops, I got something under it. Because I got, I got just so, or modeling paste on the back. Just gonna wipe that right off. Somehow I must have with my mess got modeling paste on the back. And here we go. Let me just wipe that right off. Have to pay attention and not set it down on top. I bet it's in the middle of everything. All right. So no biggie. And that's the other thing that's great about this type of project is, is it doesn't have to be perfect, but I did not want a great big blob. So that's why, if it if it's just messes up with the writing a little bit, I'm totally okay with that. But, and you can move it around, so you can have different parts of it. And even though it's not really going to say the whole thing, I know it's there, and you'll know it's there if you use it. So that's kind of a neat thing to me. So you can see that... Let me pull it up close. I did. I got gesso all over, or modeling paste all over the back of this. And there we go. So that is it. That was so, that's easy. And if y'all don't have that, I'm, I'm sure you can find it. I'm not sure if Alda has it or not. And I'm going to give all this a little bit of dry time. I've even got gesso on my pants. Oh, my camera moved again. I'm going to set it. I'm sorry, y'all. I should have known that... Ah, I think I got it. Okay. All this a little bit. Have a draw. I think y'all can see that a little bit. I'm not going to worry a whole lot about the sides. Getting totally dry. I'm jealous of anybody that has a local scrap store. All of ours closed. Get that. Yeah. And this is great too. And don't burn my hand. Because I love modeling paste too because it doesn't take forever in a day to dry. It pretty much dries really quick. Okay, so there is our base done. And now we're going to start doing all the details that, uh, that to me make them a little more special. And we're going to start out. And um, I'm going to use Mod Podge. I know that right now we're all using the, uh, oh goodness, the mediums. And the only thing I had was I had some some of the art medium or what do you call it? Anyway, some of the art medium, the gel mediums. I know I found the word. Um, the only one I had was glossy. And because the flowers are matte, for whatever reason, I just felt like I wanted to go matte. 
Now this you can choose. So if there's color you want to stand out, if you want the reds, you can look at your heart and you can decide and decide how you want it to be. This is still too low. It just keeps the dropping down. Uh, somebody text me if I just go totally out of the camera. I'm going to quit worrying about it. So you can kind of choose where you want it. And I think I'll go this way because I kind of like where the stuff is. And, of course, this is the mat because that was the whole point of using the Mod Podge instead of the mediums. And um, this will set really easy. And remember, I'm going to fold it to the side a bit. I need to get rid of my paper towel. So that probably gives y'all a better picture if I get rid of all that white. And I'm not using a ton, uh, but enough because this is cardstock. You want to use enough that you can get it to stick. And you can always go back and add more. And so you want to just place it. And then I'm going to wrap the side around, but I'm going to place the top first and get it where I like. No, like remember, no right or wrong. Most of my projects aren't unless it's a layout, and then I have to have everything straight, which you would never know judging from a layout I did recently. I don't, I don't know what I was thinking when I did that. All right, and I'm going to hold this down a bit, and then I'm just going to give it a fold over. This is what I did, and I'm going to have to scoot it over just a tiny bit. Got this almost the same size as the other. And then I'm going to put a little bit on the side. Um, I think the gel medium will probably also stick a little easier and a little faster. I'm not positive because I did not use it for the. I've not used it for this yet, but I know as a rule it does. And I still don't have that quite far enough over. There we go. Go look at it again. And then I usually just rub my hands on it to try to get it to have that first grip too high. Except that I'm never going to get this one placed. Yes, if you're asking about the stencil, it is. It, it, it's literally called Ardias, and it's by Crafter's Workshop. Okay, and we're going to do some on the top, too. And this will help it stick a little bit more, and it will also give it a layer for when we start using the markers, because tonight we're going to use, I didn't get that quite dry enough, but uh, it's making my color move a bit. But um, if your color does move, don't worry about it because mine did and will, and we can always add a bit more if we want um, as we go. Okay. Moved a little more this time than it did last time, which is why I think that I probably didn't have quite enough dry time for it. So, and then I'm going to give the whole thing just a little bit of gesso. Not gesso, I'm sorry, Mod Podge. The other thing I've noticed with the, uh, the gel mediums is, is they don't make the paper buckle quite as much as Mod Podge can. So for some projects, I think that's a real plus. This one, it doesn't make any difference. And, and I'm sorry, I'll always love my Mod Podge. It's just easy. I always have it on hand. This brush doesn't like me very much. It's losing a little bit of foam on it. Okay. So that is it for that. And then I'm going to dry this one a little bit and make sure it's all stuck. You can see, I told y'all I'm going to get messy. When it starts to bubble, don't like stick your finger on it and leave it, but you can use your fingers and smooth it a bit. I know Alda is cringing right now, but that's why somebody invented baby wipes. <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me. 
for me. I started laughing and made myself cough too. You can see I got a little bubble there. <laughs> that foam brush was a mess tonight. We're not going to use it again. It left me some foam on my project. Sorry, this is taking a little bit longer. Oh, this is why I prefer a hair dryer. You can see I just kind of bubbled that up, but I'm going to add a little bit of water here in a sec and add a little bit more color back on. And actually, let's do that real quick. Okay, I'm going to go in and add a touch more color because I think it may be that brush is pulling apart. So it is pulling my project apart a little bit. So I'm going to add a touch more color here and there. And I don't have any of the orange. And to me, this is kind of what's, well, there's lots of things I love about mixed media, but I think it's great because there's no real right or wrong and you can keep layering it. And that, to me, that's just perfect. Because you can't mess it up. And if you do, so what? Put something else on top of it. I'm going to get a little bit more water. I'm just using my paintbrush to get some water. Okay, I'm going to add us a little bit more color back in here. Get rid of some of that, that brush that decided to foam on me tonight. You know that never happens when you're doing it by yourself. It only happens when you're doing a show. And so you can see here, and see how this just goes over, and I got a little more on my heart, and that's okay. I just wiped off the, the place where it was a little too much, in my opinion. And I'm just getting a little bit more color back on here. Um, this sets on the gesso, gesso a little bit better, and I do not know why I want to call it gesso tonight, but I do. So, got me a little bit more color back in there. And I want it to go back to my blues, because it looks prettier with my flowers. So, all right, give it a touch, no problem. Okay, now we've got some color back in there. We're gonna, we're gonna use the hair dryer. I thought that'd be faster, but I think it's actually a bit slower, but it's not bubbling and pulling it off as much. So, and then let me get this. Okay, next up is uh, giving myself one more touch of color. Next up is I took, I don't know if y'all have used these Faber, I guess they're Faber Castell markers. And these are the, the pit, look at my hands are horrible, the pit big brush markers. And the, I'm, I'm going to run late. I can already see that. We're going to step up the pace because most of it, we're going to have to use a little bit more Mod Podge, but not a ton. And I added just a few more colors to really give it a touch more detail that I wanted to stand out just a hair more. It doesn't matter where. I know that if you're truly an artist, you do care where, but I... For this type of project, I just, it doesn't have to be true shadowing to be, to look good. It doesn't have to be perfect. So added a bit with that. And this one is called Scarlet Red. It's number 118. And then I wanted, 
after I did this, I thought, in hindsight, I wish I had raised it up for dimension. But we're going to kind of give it that look. And this one is gr cold gray. And so what I did, and you can just use your hand, you can use your fingers, or if you're older, you can probably grab a paper towel. But I'm just giving it a little bit of shadowing to give it a little more of the look of some dimension, since I did not actually raise it up. And this will set with Mod Podge, but it also is very workable. It doesn't set immediately, so you can smear it around. And basically, that's exactly what I'm doing, is I'm just smearing it. Let me get a little closer so you can see. Okay, now to truly set it, we're going to have to add some heat on it. But then next up, I made sure I wanted to... Um, I wanted to outline it because this is pretty, but it's all kind of the same. So to give it, to make that heart pop a little bit and become the focal point, this is also a Faber-Castell Faber pen, and this is just the Pitt Art Artist pen, and you can see it's got a brush tip. I buy the packages of four, and they're all different tips. And this one, I'm actually using a brown one, um, but you can use black. I just happen to have the brown ones on hand. These are the sepia. And all different sizes and this is truly maybe I ought to pull in here I'm scared to move it much but you can see I'm not even truly worrying about I'm outlining it but I just used you know doesn't have to be a perfect line I'm not even going all the way around I'm not even trying and if you get off like that doesn't matter and I went ahead and carried it around And that was it for the heart. And I did add just a little line here. And then I went ahead and decided, after I looked at it here, still pretty, but I thought I'd like to have a little bit of detail around the edges. I think maybe just, I kept thinking it needed to be a little more grounded with these colors. And you can do it any way you want. You can use lots of lines. You can use broken lines. You can put squiggles on them. Um, it's totally up to you how you want to do this. But I wanted to not get too detailed because I also knew that regardless of how fast I went, we were, we were in danger of going over a bit. So that is what I did. And then I did add just a couple of little extras. And then if you want to do some little squiggly lines, you can. Yeah, we'll do it here. And those are simple. Basically, you're just going to give it a little squiggle. You can do dots or whatever, but just to break it up a bit. So here you can see up close how that goes. And these, like I said, these need to set, and they take a little bit of heat to set. So we're going to heat this up real quick. And while I'm heating, I'll mess with the camera again, because that seems to be what I do. Kathy, I like that you need them. That's awesome. Okay. This is not totally dry. But I think it's dry, just about dry enough for us to move on. Two, if you haven't used these heat guns, just a little tip is keep it moving. Because if you don't, it, it tends to bubble it worse than if you than if you keep it. It won't really, mine didn't bubble except in that one place. And so you got to kind of keep it moving. 
And then the thing I did do with this, and I said I'm not going to use that. I'm not going to use that brush again. That's tearing my stuff up. But um, the thing that uh, to set this, if you add a little Mod Podge over the top, and I'm talking a little, I'm not even probably going to spend any time drying it. But you can see it set um, pretty well from the heat. But this will definitely set it, and it doesn't take a bunch. I'm really barely going to put any. And just help myself set it just a bit. Okay. I'm mean, not even sure I got it all, but close enough, right? All right. Now, the uh, I said we're going to revisit this, and we are. We're going to add a little bit more. This... Uh, where I've done the stenciling on the background, you can see it's picked up some color. And on the heart, it really hasn't, except where I did the shading with the pen. So I did go back in and add a couple more lines just to pop that white back in. And I didn't line them up. I did them kind of in the same places, but I didn't really pay any attention to making them like truly lined up. Just adding a bit of white back in. And you can see, too, that I'm not using much paste. I'm keeping this pretty thin. All right. There we go. Eventually, I'm going to have to go on the manhunt and get me another one of those stencils since I've permanently just hurt mine. Okay. And let me dry this a tiny bit. Actually, before we dry, because we're going to we're going to try to dry as few times as possible. Let me move that back in. Okay. I did add where I'm, where I'm going to put the flowers, and I'll show you. If you remember where they are, I did add just some drops of these three colors. It was great because Prima happens to make three colors that matched beautifully with the colors that uh, I used for the background. And I just opened the bottles. You can spray with these, but I think I'm better with this. When I try to spray a little, I end up with big blobs. And then I end up not liking things and feeling like I need to wipe it off and go back. And I like to try to avoid that if possible. So this one is uh, the Glistening Waves, and it's also Prima Color, color Bloom. I think my favorite thing about the Prima Color Blooms is the, the vibrancy. Of these colors. And a little bit yellow. I didn't get that one shook very much. And this one isn't going to show a whole lot, even in my project, but I wanted to add it for the little bit it does show. And I didn't get that one shook well enough. Oh, this one is Sunshine, which everybody I think is ready for. Okay, let me give this a quick dry. That's actually... We're almost to the embellishing part. A couple of more little tips. And I'll go ahead and tell y'all while I'm drying this that I pre-cut all my leaves for this. Um, and it's a good thing with how much time, right? Uh, but I pre-cut them because I thought I didn't want to have to go back and figure y'all all know how to use your machine and your dies. So um, I did use the Prima die cut leaves. And if you watch my projects at all, you know that they show up very, very often on my projects. Um, and I have my definite favorite, which I use tonight. 
And now if Prima could just call and ask my opinion, I would ask them to make a whole package of just these so I could cut like five or six at a time. So these are the die cut leaves we're going to use. Um, and like I said, they're pre-done. And what, oh, and what I did was, is I used this one, which is my all-time favorite, and I love this one too, um, cause the, with the way it goes with it. I actually love all of them, but for some reason, that leaf just really appeals to me. So it tends to show up a lot. Um, and I'm going to tell you all another thing I did, and we'll place this as we go, is that the words on this canvas are just printed. And I actually went ahead and pre-printed them and pre-cut them, but I did them on cream-colored cardstock that actually matches the cardstock color that I used on the leaves. And uh, I did not, I didn't put it on the supply list, but what it was was it was Edwardian script ITC, and I used a 72 font. And I like the way the size of these to work with the size of the florals. So that's kind of what I. I kind of looked at it and decided mm, that'll look good with the with the same. And it, it was all complimentary. And I'm just going to lay them here. And in fact, we're just going to go ahead and place them because I think that's about right. Now, another trick to know: um, printer paper will bleed, and printer ink will bleed. I I I just have a regular. I don't have like a fancy printer. So one thing I do want to tell y'all when you're doing printer when you're doing printer paper to do or printer ink to do these types of projects, go ahead and Mod Podge on the backs and lay them down. And I'm fixing to show y'all. And if my, if my, if my, I usually use a foam brush, but I don't want to get up and leave to get a different one. And that one is bad. So what you're going to do is just put it on the back, leave the front dry for now. And again, no real rhyme or reason. I'm just kind of going with similar placement to the last one, just for the sake of ease. You can do it however you want. I do like to offset because, as you'll see, these are not the same size. I just cut them fairly close to the same size. Um, and if, you, if I try to line them up, it would mean they all had to be the same, and, and it would drive me crazy because I'd have my ruler out making sure they were the same. And so on this type of thing, sometimes I'll even hand cut them with my scissors. I did use my printer or my trimmer for this one. But after you get it stuck a little, remember the fronts are pretty dry. And that, the reason being is if you run this across this, it's going to mess it up. You're going to, it's going to, uh, you're going to have a black stripe across it because it's going to bleed out. But and normally, like I said, I do this, and I'll show, I'm not going to touch it with it, but normally I just use a, th a, a sponge brush and just sponge on top of it like that. Tonight, I'm just going to use this. And, and just go over the color. Don't go back. If you keep going back, like I just, and I have a tendency to want to do that too, just get your initial amount of Mod Podge over it and make sure you get each spot. I went back that time because I missed one. But don't use a lot. Just use a bit and make sure that you don't drag. And actually, I got a bunch right there. And that will keep it from spreading that ink all the way across not only your words and making them not look as sharp, but also your whole project. And then give it a try. And after this is done, then you can go back and smooth it and make sure it sticks down further. But this is going to seal that ink very easily. I don't like them. And normally I don't touch it, but this heat gun is so hot it's making it bubble faster than it dries. I'm sorry, I know this blow dryer is loud, but it's what works best. Okay, so that you can see. And we're going to do the same thing with it if I can find my pens. If we're going to give this a quick little outline. And this is not stuck real well because I'm, I'm going quicker. But And I will go back and add a tiny bit more Mod Podge. But and for the sake of time, I'm not going to. And this, we're going to do the same thing. We're just going to do some little lines. And if you can go look at the close-ups on my project on Facebook or at, the, at Flying Unicorn, and you'll see that these are... These are just really several lines, and I 
Didn't worry about making it straight, making it perfect. Just making sure that we make these letters pop with the heart. And I'm going to pull that up close so y'all can see. So that is the whole background. We're good with that. So now for the, the more fun part and much cleaner, if your hands don't look like mine, is the embellishing. I'm going to grab all these and get them close. These are, uh, of course, flowers. I know we discussed last week if we all use flowers all the time. And I was one of the ones that admitted that, yes, pretty much every, pretty much every project. Okay, so these, uh, I started out with the Prima. These are Delight. And these are from Prima Marketing. And Alda has them in the store. I got them, of course, from her. And let me get my glue. And then I told y'all I pre-cut my leaves. And I did a couple of extra. And, and I just started placing them. So this is going to be, let me pull my project back in to where you have the whole project again. Because we're not so worried about the close-ups. I'll bring it to you. Okay. Um, and you can choose any ones you want. I'm just going to, like I said, because I'm I'm running so so far on time, I'm going to stick with the ones that I already used from, uh, for the other project instead of trying to make new choices. And let's see. This one. This is so cute. I have to show you all. I'm a sucker for plaid. This is like that same corally, uh, watermelony color and blue plaid. And, and because these are in the package, they're, I like to give them a pinch and kind of pop them up a little bit. And so both of these packages are the, the Prima Delight. I think that's all I used. And I don't know why I have a gray one here, but I do. And same with this. And you can play with these. What did I do? There it is. <laughs> I did say paint. You don't have to journal to need markers. Markers are amazing. Okay, and these, I like to give them uh, a little curl. So I've shown you all this before, um, and I keep meaning to, and I forgot to on this one, but I have the greatest tip for making these stiff. For these, I didn't, but did you know if you use a glue stick and you glue, you glue them together, and do this same technique and let them dry that they'll get hard but what you do need to know is not all glue sticks are the same and all the fancy glue sticks my favorite for that technique is the rose art and I buy them at the Dollar Tree so I keep meaning to do that for a project and then this would have been perfect because it's a canvas to set it out but I just did not think about it. I'm going to move that so I can see it. Actually that's not going to work for me like I said, I'm not I'm I'm not reinventing the wheel tonight because we're we're behind. I'm so sorry. I know, I'm sorry that I'm going to go over just a hair. Oh, and here's a couple more of these. And for whatever reason, I always tend to do two. Um, if in doubt, do two. It it seems to work. Something about a balance thing for me. So I was thinking about pinch, and then I'm thinking about peony instead of peony. And we Southerners definitely have our our little accent issues, don't we? Okay. And then I also added um, just some little yellow roses, and these are medium size. And then I also added some little ones, and you can get these from Prima. Uh, you can get them just anywhere you find paper roses. I will tell you what, if I see paper roses and all they can probably attest to it, I'm ordering some. I'm picking them up. And then these have white and yellow. And that was part of the reason that I wanted to pull a little bit of white back into the 
into the color family, um, into the molding, modeling. Why do I want to do that today? Call it molding. I've actually got to read a tiny bit of what y'all said tonight. That drying time, it, that helps for that at least. It's kind of a kind of a slow down thing, but it lets me keep up a little bit better. Okay, let me hold those for a sec. So here we go. You can see this. So I'm building it. And then I like that blue one on top because I'm going to tuck a little angel in there. And these angels are just terrific. And so we're going to stick a little angel in there too. Oh, and these are resin and they're also from Prima. And don't think it doesn't have a name on them, but just resin angels. We're going to tuck him or her, because it's a baby, looks the same. We're just going to tuck it to where it's kind of sitting on one and sitting behind the other. And then same thing with these little flowers. We're just going to layer them up. I think right there will be good. forgot my leaves, but we're going to tuck those in too. And these, I kind of do the same thing. I just kind of hold it here and bend them. Helps them stand up a little bit at least. Okay, I'm officially two minutes over, but we're real close to being finished. So I guess my next goal for my classes is to try to really make sure I can do it in an hour. I thought I thought I might make this one. I can hear my dog outside my door. She wants in. And then, uh, let's see, what do I do with those little buttons? Oh, here, right here in front of me. Okay, and these are some, these are older Prima buttons that I have, just wood buttons. And again, you can use any ones you want. And I just went with the same one, and I went ahead and tied it. And this is just a little bit of gray Baker's twine um, from Doodlebug. And I just went ahead and, because I did know that it would be close. So I went ahead and tied it in advance rather than trying to tie it and wasting time on something that really did not make a difference. Other than that I liked it to be an on my project. But she's string bow. Okay. And this, I want to make sure I kind of overlap it a bit. And you'll see throughout this that I've overlapped it here a bit. And, and that way it kind of ties the whole design together instead of everything floating. And But I also want to make sure that you can see, because I do love, I mean, I put the words there for a reason. So I wanted to make sure I left it to where you could see that a bit still. I need yellow. Okay. And this, I oh, haven't glued that one. And then we're going to add a little rose. Actually, I need one more. And like I said, I'm sticking real true to what I did before, but you can you can arrange these anyway. I know some of y'all are like master floral arrangers with your paper flowers. It some of y'all just amaze me. And here's one of the, the rare instances where I went ahead and put three, except it doesn't want to stick in there. And remember with the Fabri-Tac, you've got a little bit of time if you want it. I'll move that out just a bit. And then tuck a couple more in. Actually, I don't like that. 
sorry, I'm hurrying, but I do still want to like it when it's finally stuck. There we go. And there's one more. And here we go. So you can see this is pretty much like I did the last one. Let me show you these up close. Aren't those leaves awesome? Maybe that should be, somebody needs to like do a whole project. Maybe one of these days I'll play with it and do a whole project just with leaves. And then the last thing I did was I added a bunch of pearls. And these, I, I, Delana did this. I totally got this tip from her. And I'm here to tell you I love her for, although I can't do it as good as she does, especially, but using the scissors, it, even if you can't get hold of them well, to help attach them is genius, especially because my hands are so covered with glue. And these, I'm just randomly putting them around. That one I can't get hold of at all. Let's see if we can tuck it up under there. Obviously, she has much better control of her scissors than I do. These do not want to come off at all, though. And then when they do, they want to hit the floor or the table. Okay, I'm going to add a couple more, and then we're going to we're going to end it. You can always, and I will tell you that if we weren't in as big a, a time crunch. I probably would add a touch of glue to these um, just to make sure they're, they're they're sticking to this background real well. But sometimes these these types of things over time will loosen up. And for a canvas, because it's not going to be in a book, nothing's going to be kind of holding it in place. I think glue is a good idea to make them permanent. How about that one? That one came right off for me. It wanted to hit here. Okay, I'm going to call that one good and I'll show you all the whole thing. I see my camera has come down a bit again. Okay, here we go. And let me show you. So it, it really truly is just a lot of simple things that to me add up to something that I like. And like I said, I like that these things are great for playing because there's no right or wrong. You can do it any way you want. Now bear with me. I'm going to come up and I hope my camera at least keeps my face on for a minute. <laughs> I'm so sorry for going over y'all. It's definitely been one of those. But uh, I'm so glad y'all were here with us. And I want to remind you, well, first I want to thank you for coming. Uh, and then I want to remind y'all that you've got another 24 hours to get a pre-order for the kit. And you definitely want it. And we've got Jennifer next week. And if there's anything you liked, and I really encourage you to play with these pigment, these uh, magicals, they are cool. Um, they're just really neat. I think you'll love them. So don't forget, you can get 10% off in the store. So thanks so much for coming, and we'll see you soon. Bye.